What's up guys? Welcome back to the Educated Barfly. Today we are going to be making an absinthe frap. Now this is a cocktail that is very old. Straighten out of your shirt. More, oh, so Marius bought this shirt for me and he's so proud of it. And it, it, it is a very fitting shirt and I do love me some Bob Ross. So there you go. Now we're getting like a good, we get a good. The only problem is, is that I have kind of like a drinking belly a little bit. I've been trying to get rid of it. I've been like biking to work and doing some stuff. I have kind of a dr drinking belly and I asked for a large and he got me a medium. And I think that's just sort of Marius's way of hazing me a little bit. Motivational he was mad at me because of the Marlin episode. Because we got like a couple of people that were like, hey, don't you treat Marius that way. Marius doesn't deserve to be talked to that way. And then another person got like really into it and they were like, Hey man, that really seemed really shitty the way you were talking to him. I don't know if you guys have, but like guys, you know that me and Marius just banter. We just have like a, we're like brothers. We're like brothers in arms. It doesn't mean anything. Marius isn't offended. Are you Marius? No. <laughs> That's really not convincing. <laughs> That's not convincing at all. Are you offended? Should it be, do I need to treat you with like a little more yes. like kid gloves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're very sad. Cause you don't seem very sensitive. You don't seem like a very sensitive guy. Are you? I wish you guys could see the look on his face because he looks really hurt. Okay, you know what? I, 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 I will be easier on you. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that I hurt your feelings so much, Marius. And you know what? You have a lot of defenders on the show. Like, I'm so glad that we were able to sort of give you a voice, give you an opinion, and now there are people who defend you against my shitty Boston humor or whatever. All right, the absinthe frap, let's get into it. I don't want too many people to say like, why did you talk for nine minutes before you got in the cocktail? Well, I talked for nine minutes before I got in the cocktail because it's my show. All right, anyway, the absinthe frap. So basically the, uh, the absinthe frap is a, I'm gonna say that again because I said it very fast. And the absinthe frap is a very old drink that dates back to about at least 1874. The old absinthe house in New Orleans claimed that their bartender, Caetano Ferrer, created it in 1874. And if he did or if he didn't, he was actually known as one of the uh, best makers of the absinthe frap. Now the absinthe frap is a cocktail or a drink that uh, is a alternative to the pomp and circumstance of just regular uh, absinthe service. You know, instead of going through all that, you know, uh, I don't know, formalities of the absinthe and the dripping of the onto the sugar and into the absinthe and you know, the louche, which is the, you know, when water gets into absinthe, it creates a kind of cloudy mixture, and that's called the louche, I think. I actually learned that from Greg, I had a drink, um, that that's called the louche. Anyway, the, uh, it's funny, because everyone thinks that I'm so knowledgeable, but I, I, there is stuff that I don't know, and, and I learned that. Uh, so uh, this is a really um, very simple drink. Uh, I'm gonna take you through it step by step, but I wanna say that fraps, right, which were just like the very cold, Drinks on, on, that are served on crushed or pebble ice uh, were, were a very uh, popular pick-me-up and they were usually done with absinthe. Uh, they were uh, popular all throughout the 1800s until the 1912 ban of absinthe. And I will probably have to do a separate... I want to do like an episode on different absinthe services from around the world, which I will probably get to soon. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the history, about the ban, about the lifting of the ban in America, about why the ban was the ban and all that stuff. But I've been doing a little bit more research because absinthe is not something that I've really di di dived deep into until recently. All right, let's get into the drink. So the first thing we're going to do is just a couple of dashes of anisette. Anisette is a anise uh, liqueur. Um, why you put anise liqueur into another anise flavored drink, I don't know. Um, then we're going to do an ounce and a half of absinthe. And then we're going to do one to two ounces, depending on how strong you want your drink, of chilled water. I'm going to do an ounce of chilled water. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to take a... That's basically like a half an ounce of pebble ice. That's it. Just that little half ounce. Because we don't want to be diluting too much. We just want to be chilling since we put an ounce of water in there. And we're just going to shake that down. Now this is a very strong drink because absinthe is very strong. It will not make you hallucinate. Um, absinthe is an anise flavored liqueur usually made from rectified spirits, I believe, uh, that has wormwood and their... Um, is a lot of reasons why people think it'll make you 
in either insane or um, hallucinate, but it won't do either one of those things. But it is very strong. So as you can see, it's like a little bit cloudy as you add the ice. That's what's called the that's called the louche. Well, right? It's the water. No, it's the water and the ice. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah, water that added to it from the uh, ice or the, the ice water. I did water, put a little ounce so. of water into it. That's true. Yeah. Good on you. Thanks, Marius. We wouldn't be able to get through this show without you. Um, and then we're just gonna do what we do with crushed ice cocktails and just give it like a nice big snow cone on top of our pebble ice. I like to press it down to like really make sure that all of the water eats up the, eats up the uh, crushed ice. But as you can see, you know, you like the, the, the level of the alcohol is staying pretty uh, low. And the reason why is because it is chilled all the way down. So you wanna actually pack this in a lot of crushed ice because to tell you the truth, or, or pebble ice, because to tell you the truth, when you pack it with ice, right, and you have the most amount of surface area uh, of ice touching the drink, it'll dilute less because once you chill it down and put it on ice, it's going to kind of keep the equilibrium for a little, a little bit longer. All right, now we're gonna take our matching-ish straw and give it a little sippy poo. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. I could see that as a pick-me-up or like a, a corp. They also call these types of drinks corp corpse revivers because they were used to uh, rouse you out of your stupor, the original hair of the dog. You got drunk or had too much absinthe the night before, you start your day with absinthe. In France, um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, it was a common practice for people to get up and have absinthe like people would have coffee nowadays before they go about their chores and get their day started. Uh, and I can see why. It's incredibly strong. It's definitely an eye-opening kind of thing. You know, and you know, it's very anise forward. You have got to love anise to love absinthe. Uh, so there you have it, my friends, the absinthe ra uh, frap. I hope you guys uh, learned something new today. And I'm just going to take this somewhere else and drink it before I shoot the next video. So if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon. We've got so much exclusive content on Patreon. We rejiggered all the uh, tiers. Uh, things are going really well there. There's some stuff that will never see the light of day on YouTube on Patreon. So if you are a big fan of the show and you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash educatedbarfly. I will see you guys on another time.